The Children of Lear Once upon a time, in the mystical land of Ireland, there lived a great king named Lear. His kingdom was blessed by the Tuatha de Danann, a race of magical beings who ruled over the land. Lear was a wise and just ruler, but his heart carried a heavy burden, a longing for love. Lear's wife, Aweave, was a gentle soul who bore him four beautiful children, Fionguala, the eldest daughter, and three sons. Their laughter echoed through the palace halls, and their innocence brought joy to all. But fate is a fickle weaver, and tragedy soon struck. Awa passed away, leaving Lear heartbroken. To ease his grief, Lear's brother, Bodbidergwai, offered one of his daughters, a wife, in marriage to Lear. A wife was fair and kind, and she loved the children as her own. Yet jealousy, like a hidden thorn, began to grow within a wife's heart. She watched Lear's affection for his children, the way he held them, told them stories, and laughed with them. Envy twisted her thoughts until she could bear it no longer. One misty morning, Aweef took the children to a secluded lake. There, she revealed her true intentions. She was a sorceress, and her jealousy had turned to malice. With a wave of her druidic wand, she transformed the innocent children into swans, four magnificent creatures with white feathers that shimmered like moonlight. The swans were bound by a cruel spell. For 900 years, they would glide across the lakes and rivers of Ireland, their voices echoing the sorrow of their hearts. They could not speak as humans, only as swans. Their wings, once arms that hugged their father, now bore them through the lonely skies. Lear was devastated. He searched every lake, every forest, hoping to find his beloved children. But they were lost to him, their human forms hidden beneath the swan's plumage. A weef had taken their voices too, leaving them with haunting melodies that spoke of longing and loss. Seasons passed, the swans endured bitter winters, gentle springs, and golden autumns. They met fishermen, travelers, and curious villagers, but none could break their enchantment. Their only solace was each other, their shared memories, their silent conversations. As the centuries flowed like water, Lear's heart remained heavy. He visited the lakes, listening to the swans' haunting songs, and in those melodies, he heard their love for him, their unwavering loyalty. He wept, knowing he could not hold them, comfort them, or tell them how much he missed them. And so, under the moon's watchful eye, the swans continued their endless flight. Until one fateful day, as the ninth century drew to a close, they returned to the lake where it all began. Their feathers molted, and their human forms emerged. The swans ascended to the heavens, their spirits released. Fionwala, Aod, Viatra, and Khan became constellations, their silhouettes etched against the night sky, and Lear, standing by the water's edge, felt their presence. His tears fell like rain, for he knew they were finally free. And so, the legend of the children of Lear Yuan lives on, a tale of transformation, endurance, and the enduring power of love, whispered by the winds and echoed in the ripples of forgotten lakes.